Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. And today, as you can see, we are not featuring Tier 10 tanks, and we are not featuring Soviet mediums that can play equally well as hold down heavies as they can fast mediums. Hooray, said everybody, and then we're immediately drowned out by everybody else saying, Oh my god, Jingles, now you're promoting seal clubbing, because on the internet, even when you're right, you're wrong. Anyway, this is Stone of Ace. I'm just going to call him Ace. In the Mark III Churchill, this is the Lend-Lease variant of the Churchill that's in the Soviet heavy tank line. It is, of course, a premium. And it makes bonus experience, which means that this is an incredibly good tank for training up Soviet heavy tank crews. The Mark III Churchill was different to the preceding Marks I and II in a couple of ways. First, it features a welded turret, a much better turret, and a six-pounder gun rather than the two-pounder that previous versions of the tank were equipped with. It was due to the limited availability of rolled armour plate, only 675 were built. And of that 675, a large percentage were shipped to the Soviet Union, along with several Churchill Mark IVs as part of the Lend-Lease program. Exact numbers differ depending on which source you quote, with the Soviets claiming 301 were sent and us claiming that we sent 344, so we don't know what you did with the other 43. 91 were lost en route when the ships transporting them via the Arctic convoys were sunk, but the couple of hundred that were received did see use in several large tank battles, including, but not limited to, the Battle of Stalingrad, where the 47th and 48th heavy tank regiments comprising of 42 Churchills took part. In 1943, the 5th Guards tank army used Churchills in the battles of Prokhorovka, Kursk, and the 4th Battle of Kharkov. It was used in other battles until 1944, by which time the Red Army had more than enough numbers of IS and T-3485 tanks to discontinue the use of the Churchill completely. The Churchill was of course very, very slow, and is in World of Tanks, but this didn't really matter so much at the time because it was designed as an infantry support tank. It was supposed to keep pace with the infantry, so being fast wasn't particularly useful. The problem lay in this six-pounder gun. The 57mm shell that it fired in the anti-tank role was actually fairly effective, and had no problem whatsoever defeating the armour of opponents like the Panzer III and the Panzer IV. The high explosive shell, however, was pretty terrible. There's a limit to the amount of high explosive filler that you can fit inside a 57mm shell. And in fact, if you look at the ammunition selection at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that the Mark III Churchill here in World of Tanks doesn't even get a high explosive shell. And that's actually fairly accurate, because while the 57mm or 6 pounder high explosive shell was produced, it was quickly realised that it was almost completely ineffective and so even if it was issued, it was very rarely ever actually used. And that's the curious thing about the Churchill Mark III, because it is still very much an infantry tank, but it does not, aside from its machine guns, have effective infantry support weapons. It doesn't have a high explosive shell, and the 105mm howitzer, which was fitted to the Churchill Mark I, at this point, had been abandoned. The six-pounder gun, however, as we can see, did remain very, very good at causing all kinds of problems for enemy tanks. It only does 75 damage per hit. Its accuracy and aiming time are pretty bad. At that kind of range, however, accuracy and aiming time don't really matter, and it's rate of fire that counts. And the Churchill's six-pounder gun spits them out at a rate of 26.25 shots per minute. Or in other words, even though it takes 2.29 seconds to aim, by the time you've aimed, you've reloaded. <laughs> so, it actually works quite well. In fact, you can get the reload down to around about 1.9 seconds with vents, a gun rammer, and a well-trained crew. But that can actually start to work against you, because you're loading faster than you can aim. Again, if you're fighting at close ranges, that's not really so much of a problem. But if you are finding this to be a problem, then you can just add a gun laying drive to your vents and your rammer and you'll bring the aiming time down to 1.9 seconds as well, so it all works out. What all of this means is that you have a tank that's only doing 75 damage per shot, but which can have a theoretical damage per minute at tier 5 of 2333.3 dpm, which is just ridiculous. Of course, this is theoretical damage per minute. Actually achieving those kind of numbers relies on you constantly having the gun firing as fast as it can reload and hitting and penetrating with every shot that you fire, and that's obviously not going to happen in practice. Unlike certain other British heavies, and yes, Carnarvon, I'm looking at you here, 
that have similar low alpha damage but high rate of fire guns that rely in order to achieve their theoretical DPM output in sitting there and taking return fire the Churchill can actually take it particularly when it's top tier providing it doesn't allow itself to get outflanked and take shots from the side it is entirely capable of weathering the storm and to be completely honest I am extremely surprised that Ace waited this long to pull this move because these two enemy tanks he basically has them at his mercy now he's in a depression between two sand dunes nobody else on the enemy team can actually interfere with him here and he can just well he can do this I am actually quite surprised that he waited this long to pull this move because if he'd done this two minutes ago and he could have done this two minutes ago with exactly the same outcome his team might not have been in such a dubious position he would have been able to advance further around to the north and be in a much much better position to support the panzers that are threatening the enemy base from the north on the other hand you could also argue that because he didn't he's in a better position to threaten these enemy tanks in the middle and if he had pushed further around to the north right now he would have been stuck in the middle of absolutely nowhere and way too far out of position in order to fall back in a slow tank like the Churchill 3 and defend the base so we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt here I mean right now he only has two surviving teammates but the Panzer 5-4 up to the north of the enemy base has currently been surrounded and taken apart and has just died who you could argue may not have died if Ace had pulled that move two minutes earlier and been in a position to threaten the enemy base from the south perhaps drawing defenders away from the cluster of friendly tanks attacking the enemy base from the north perhaps giving them the opportunity that they needed to win their fight but well you can play the what if game all day if you want to Who's to say that if he had done that he wouldn't have been caught in open ground and pinned down in a crossfire between the enemy base defenders and the enemy tanks who were in the centre of the map. He wouldn't have died because he wouldn't have been in a position to shoot at them if he had executed that move two minutes earlier. At the end of the day he did what he did and now it's just him and that KV-1 against seven enemy tanks. That's the bad news. The good news is, it's him in a Churchill Mark III and a KV-1 against seven enemy tanks, although they do have a KV-1 of their own. But if he can link up with that friendly KV-1, between the two of them, they should be able to put up a fairly solid defence, particularly if there's a whole bunch of low health enemy tanks who come at them one at a time. Okay, six enemies. You see the DPM of this tank when you give it the opportunity to just shoot at something. Admittedly, the M4 could have done better. He did fire high explosive. Thought he was being clever, had the side of a Churchill to shoot at. Although the M4 could have been armed with a howitzer rather than the 75mm gun for all I could tell. At that range, it was difficult to be sure. Right, it looks like Ace has decided he's going to guard this side. And he's allowing the KV-1 to cover the base from the other side. And that seems to have been a very good decision. Despite this ridiculous rate of fire, he was only able to get two shots into the SU-85. Oh dear, oh dear, what are you doing? <laughs> oh no, I'm being shot at, I'd better drive down into cover, and then immediately drive out of cover. <laughs> As if he'd forgotten that the tank that just took half of his remaining health off three seconds ago might still be there. So that's good news. SU-85 in particular... Um, of the tanks remaining on the enemy team probably had the most dangerous gun as far as a Mark III Churchill is concerned so that was nice two down five to go oh he's been spotted Who's... oh look at that cheeky little bugger the enemy Panzer 5-4 that is actually a very very good move because from that position he can proximity spot both the KV-1 and the Mark III Churchill and he's also distracting everybody and allowing sneaky little buggers like that to pop up and threaten everyone from the rear. That is a very, very good move from the Panzer. 
Of course the KV-1's watching him now, which means it's down to Ace to watch everywhere else at the same time. And you know what? Credit to the enemy team. It's not like they're all just driving up one at a time on low health, waiting to get one shot. And they are trying to coordinate this attack, spearheaded by the Panzer Mark V IV up there. I mean, if they'd all attacked at exactly the same time, and if Ace wasn't driving a tank that has a sub two second reload, <laughs> this, this might have actually been quite successful. But as far as their coordination goes, I think it's about the best that you can expect from a bunch of random battle teammates. It sadly just wasn't quite enough. It was enough to take out the KV-1, but Ace is still alive and he still has half of his health. The KV-1 could still be a problem. Eh, not much of a problem. Look at the difference in reload times and the effective rate of fire. Because it's not just all about the rate of fire, it's about putting down effective fire. The KV-1 fired at him once and missed. And in the length of time before the KV-1 was able to even think about firing another shot, he'd already put four or five shots back into the KV-1. Come on, chase down the M8. It's only an M8. Or maybe the KV-1. Actually, you know what? You're not really in any rush. You're nicely angled against the KV-1. You can take him out. And the M8 stands no chance. So, stone face getting 10 kills, an ace tanker, steel wall, high caliber and top gun in one of the thousands of Lend-Lease tanks sent to Soviet Russia during World War II along with the hundreds and thousands of trucks, jeeps, guns, raw materials, fuel and ammunition which the Soviet Union insisted played no significant part whatsoever in blunting the German offensive while at the same time yelling at us for not sending them more. Remember kids, in Soviet Russia, the facts are what the glorious party says they are. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. Ace, extremely well done. Congratulations on the result. And I hope everybody enjoyed it, because that's it for today. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.